Hello everyone, Eric with Ham Radio Concepts. That's me. And I have a interesting video here for you. Let's check this out. Now imagine you're using a Bofung or a uh, VHF, UHF handheld in your travels, okay? But then imagine having that built into a smartphone. This is an Android-based smartphone with RF transmitter in it. This is from a company called Outphone. O-U-T-F-O-N-E dot com. I purchased this online. This is the model S15. And there are several other models, uh, companies out there that claim they have stuff like this, but then you contact them and they say it doesn't exist. So Outphone has these in VHF or UHF models, as well as the ability to make this with a PTT app for over network instead of using RF. But check this out. Android 4.4.2, a rugged smartphone that is built to be dropped. It's built to be H2O submersible, which you're going to see in this video. I'm going to dunk it in the water. Okay, it can be dropped. I have dropped it before um, from a pretty high height, but a 1.5 watt RF transmitter built in. Okay, uh, let's look at the phone here. So the antenna does come off. A lot of people are probably going to ask, do I have to keep the antenna on there? No. You can take the antenna off, use it like a regular phone. Um, if you're familiar with any Android phone, as a lot of people are, yes, it does have a camera on the back with the flash. It does have a camera on the front. Um, and uh, it does take an SD card inside, four gigabytes of memory, I believe, built in with the addition of the SD card you put in inside. Two SIM cards can go in here, carrier unlocked. So you can use two different SIM cards from two different carriers. You don't have to unlock the phone, it's already unlocked for worldwide use. Um, looking at the case here, the case is rugged, it's it's solid, okay? The waterproof buttons, waterproof seals, the battery is screwed on with a waterproof seal around it so that the water does not get in. On the right side of the radio, you do have your uh, headphone jack here with your micro USB um, connector. It fits the same kind of USB data cord, charging cord as you would use for your Samsung phones and make sure that's uh, put on there and you know kept tight for water seal. All right, Your uh, PTT button here in the middle, which I like because it's not really, you don't have to use the PTT button on the touch screen of the phone. You can actually use it like a walkie talkie and use it for PTT. All right, And your power button down here. On the other side, your volume knobs and they call this an SOS button. Um, I'm not sure what that really does. I think it throws an emergency beacon out, but I haven't really played with it. All right. So um, let's get into the phone and check it out. Like I said, the link is in the description. Make sure you subscribe and comment below uh, so that you can keep an eye on the videos coming out here in the future and uh, check out the manufacturer for this. But let's get into the phone. We'll do some uh, on-air clips from when I was on a repeater locally one night, and then we'll do the water test. So looking in the settings, it is a dual SIM card phone. It is carrier unlocked, so you can put in probably any SIM card that you can get a hold of and put it in here. Uh, I do have a T-Mobile SIM card in here, Family Mobile, and this is a 3G phone. However, at my house, I never usually hit 3G uh, occasionally, but when I'm roaming around different parts of the town, I do. So I know that when my friend let me use his AT&T SIM card for testing, uh, I did hit 3G on his AT&T card, so I guess the phone either caters to AT&T or AT&T has a better network. Um, Wi-Fi, I get the same speeds, uh, probably B, G, and N. I get the same uh, Wi-Fi speeds as I get on my Galaxy S4. Uh, Bluetooth, and uh, anything else that you're familiar with in Android. If I go to About Phone, here it is here, S15. Android version 4.4.2. And I'm sure there's somebody out there on the XDA forums that can uh, build a custom ROM for this. It'd be interesting to see, but uh, you know, uh, we'll leave that to the professionals. So the big question, the walkie talkie app, what does it look like? Well, here it is right here on the bottom. I have it here. And uh, so for, before, I'll show you the first question I know everybody's gonna ask, does this have a programming cable and software? I'm going to say the answer is no. I have not seen one and I don't think they make one. But let me show you how easy it is to put a frequency in here. In fact, if you're a licensed amateur radio operator, you will know exactly what I'm about to show you. It's this simple. The bars on the top here, click the bars. There's your frequency list. You click the plus. 
Okay, now I'll try to zoom in a little bit so we can see. And uh, we're going to add a frequency right now, a memory. For namesake, I'm going to call this uh, KJ4YZI repeater. Okay? Power, high or low. Bandwidth, 12.5 kilohertz or 25 kilohertz. Okay? And your receive and transmit frequency. Now, this is your where you put your offset. Basically, receive frequency be the frequency of the repeater, the output. 146.850. And your transmit. So that'd be a standard negative 600 kilohertz offset. 146.250. All right. And your squelch, we'll just call it number two. This is zero through eight. And uh, your CTCSS tones. Now, the CTCSS encode and decode do not show as your standard 107.2 or 100. Um, I had to Google online the chart, it's 0 through 38, and it shows you the corresponding number of the tone here to the actual tone frequency. So in this situation, 107.2 would be number 14. And I'm not, someone's going to comment and tell me why it's like that. But other than that, you can look up the chart, find your CTCS tone for your repeater, and then find the corresponding number. Um, and that's it. You hit OK, and that's it. Now look, I have uh, KJ4YZI down here. I've done this a couple times testing. So you can just click on it, and you go to that frequency. That simple. Um, go back to your list here, and I can go to my local repeater frequency. So let's, uh, I'll show you a clip of when I was on the net one night into a repeater and uh, a test, and then we'll go right to the water test. Oh, good evening, Richard, and everyone on the net. I didn't get to make it to Hamfest because, uh, of course, my schedule got changed, or they changed the schedule because of the hurricane. Uh, but I am checking in again on my little um, Android smartphone with VHF transmitter in it, so I hope I'm making it into the repeater okay. Still having fun with this thing, and uh, it's pretty cool to have a radio and a phone all in one. Nothing else to put in, Richard. Thanks for taking the net. 7-3, KJ4YZI. Yeah, I'll be putting one up soon. As soon as my computer gets put back together, I'm missing some parts. It took a dive, but uh, we're going to be back up and running. I'll have a video up for you. All right, Dr. Bob, KK4KT. Good evening, sir. All right, guys, here it is. Water test. All right. Uh, bon voyage. See what happens if I transmit into it. Hello, test, test, test. Let's see. Oh, QRZ.com. Look at that. Try the uh, walkie talkie app. Okay. Hello, test. Test, test, one, two. Let's blow the water out of that real quick. <laughs> Hello, test. Test, test, one, two. One, two, three. Might be a little too close. There we go. One, two, three, three, two, one. One, two, three. Testing after water test. Let's put it back in. So IP68 would be 
I guess three feet in water for 30 minutes. Uh, I'm just doing it submersed like this just to see what happens, just covering it up. All my stuff's on here, so I better hope it doesn't go bad. <laughs> testing, testing one, two, one, two, three with the ASU. Hello, test. Test, test, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one. It's working. All right, so water test is a success. Uh, check out outphone.com for this thing, if you can see that in the light. Uh, I give it a thumbs up. I think it's a really neat idea. Hopefully I can get other models of like this, and we'll, we'll compare them all. 7.3 from KJ4YZI.